Buckle up, everyone. You are strapped in and ready for the Insurance Hour with me, your host, Carl Sussman, informing, educating, and entertaining Californians one policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here today. Phone lines are open. Give us a call, 559-656-0317. Call or text that number, or if you want to get on our text list, you can go ahead and shoot a text over with any message to 5674 Carl. That's 5674 3. Uh, I'm sorry, 567 367 5275. Clearly, I have not had my coffee just yet. Today, we have a special guest I'd like to introduce. This is Klebe Best. He is the vice president of IIBAZ, and I know. You're dying to know what in the world that is, so let's just jump right in. Cleve, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Carl. For some of you that don't know, Carl and I go way back uh, to uh, national company boards and things like that. Carl, the um, letters I-I-A-B-A-Z stand for Independent Insurance Agents and Brokers of Arizona. We're a trade association. There are 50 of us throughout the country. Each state has one. And we are the trade association, like realtors or doctors, for independent insurance agents and brokers in Arizona. So so IIBA is a national organization, and then they have different state uh, groups, I suppose, in each state? Right. The the national is Independent Insurance Agents and Brokers of America, and then you're going to have the 50 different uh, organizations uh, in each state. Gotcha. Gotcha. And I know that's interesting because we're talking a lot of times on the show about California-centric issues. And I'm always saying this is not just a California issue, people. This is not just a California issue. So I was excited to have you on to shed some light on that as well, because being in California, of course, spotlights on us. We're so large. We've got all this, you know, press and everyone loves California after all, right? So I thought it would be great to actually have somebody on that can speak from another state. So I, you, you were the perfect go to. And you've been in the insurance industry, uh, as long as I have been. We won't say how many years because we don't want to date ourselves or anything, but Give me a little bit of history. Where did, when you first started out, I'm sure you went to high school and college and you said, I want to be an insurance person when I grow up. Tell me how this all happened. Absolutely, Carl. No, I never thought I would go into insurance. I actually am a fourth generation Californian, grew up in the Bay Area, went to school at UC Santa Barbara, graduated in the 70s, decided to obviously get into business like most everybody did then, sent resumes out. And then one of my parents' friends was in insurance and suggested that I apply to some insurance companies. He set up some interviews, started with Continental Insurance in the 70s, then got transferred out here to Arizona in 1980, then worked for AIG for a while, started my own general agency, and for the last 26 years uh, had a insurance agents, independent insurance agency here in Scottsdale. So you've done it all. When you worked for AIG, were you working as in sales or were you in underwriting or what were you doing for them? I was actually the marketing rep for uh, Arizona and Nevada and and the company under the AIG umbrella was New Hampshire Insurance Company. Oh, I see. Okay. So you, you've always been in the sales realm. I was trying to see if we had anything else in there, underwriting wise or, or, or anything sneaky in there, but you've got a, you've, your sales been through and through. Well, actually, I was an underwriter in San Francisco and was a large commercial underwriter out here before I joined AIG. So I've done a little bit of everything. You've done it because it sounds like you've done a little bit of everything. And, and you're, from your perspective, having been through all the different roles and, and the different positions, what do you like more? What, what's the what's the real thing to do if you're going to be going into the insurance industry? What should you be doing? My advice to young people is it's not boring. I think too many people think that, oh, it's sales or it's boring or whatever. We just recently had our 90th anniversary, annual convention and they were talking about 90? AI. Yes. Wow. We're the premier independent agency association here in Arizona. So they were talking about AI. So AI is huge. It's coming. Don't be afraid of it. 
But to me, anything you want to do, if you're an engineer, insurance, again, Carl, is not just sales. So to young people, whatever your major is, whatever your passion is, whether it's helping people, whether it's engineering, loss control, AI, computers, whatever, we can, we've got a role for you, and it is. It's a very honorable profession, and you're always helping people. People need insurance, and Carl, the best thing for me is we're selling a promise. And when we can deliver on that promise to our clients, it's huge. It makes you feel really good when you can help somebody with a loss and get their life and their business or whatever back on track. Selling a promise really does summarize it, right? Because there's nothing tangible Used to be a physical policy. Now it's a PDF file, right? For the yes. most part. So what what is it? What is it like for you? Uh, I know what it's like for me, but I'd love some experience from you. When you're in that position where someone has had a claim, and it's time for you to step in and and be their advocate and be there with them. What does that feel like? It's a partnership. So to me, too many times, the agent slash company whatever is disengaged or they're not a part it's a basically you have i call it a three-legged stool carl you've got the company you've got your agent and you've got your insured and they all have to like a three-legged stool they all have to be in sync for it to work properly so for my agency i told my clients and, and unless it's a catastrophe your roof blows you don't need to call me but for Run of the mill claims, call me. Let's discuss it. Let's see, and to to the point about hard market, let's see if it makes sense for any market to turn the claim in. Some people's pain point for money is very low. So maybe a, a five hundred dollar claim over their deductible makes sense. And for others, maybe it's five thousand, maybe it's ten thousand, but whatever it is. Work with your agent. Call your agent. They're, they're your trusted advisor. And too often, Carl, you've seen this, is an insured has a number of claims. And in today's climate, it's hard to get insurance. And a lot of times, they're small nuisance claims. Right. Cleve, hang on just one second. I want to talk about claims and the trusted advisor idea, because that really is where we shine I know you're going to be the advocate for this, right, as an independent. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to have our special guest, Cleve Best. Well, we will be back in a flash. Let's talk about earthquakes for a minute. Look, we know we live in earthquake country here in California. Powerful, devastating earthquakes have happened here before, and science says that they will happen again. They can't tell us exactly when. They can just tell us that it is going to happen. Count on it. Prepare for it. Did you know that earthquakes are not covered by your homeowner's insurance policy? You need a separate policy to give you the peace of mind that you will be able to recover without getting financially wiped out the next time we get hit with a big one. There is a great company here in California that will provide you with earthquake coverage you need at a price you can afford. That company is GeoVera. I have a policy through GeoVera. I really like how easy it is to choose from all of their great coverage options, backed by the financial strength that lets me know that they will be here for me when I need them the most. Go to getquake.com forward slash insurance hour to learn more. That's getquake.com slash insurance hour. Make sure you're ready for the day when the ground shakes again. Hello, hello. Welcome back. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here today. Remember, the phone lines are open, 559-656-0317, phone or text. You can also join our texting group at 5674-CARL. That's 567-367-5275. Also send those questions in to questions at insurancehour.com. We want to get those questions and get those answers off to you. Today we have our special guest, Cleve Best, and he is here. We are talking about, I know, insurance, and we're talking specifically right now before the break about the role of the independent agent when it comes to claims and just the independent agent in general. Cleve, I didn't mean to interrupt you. We had to jump off there to pay the bills, but please continue where you were. Tell me what what it is like at that period of time when you're making that distinction with a customer, whether it's to file a claim or not file a claim, and how individualized is that? 
Well, <clears throat> again, as I mentioned, everybody has a different pain point. Um, so what you want to do is everybody's individual. Your customer, it's not one size fits all. You, again, back to this point, I, I'm going to keep using it, trusted advisor. That's who your agent slash company should be. If there may be some disinterested person in another state or, you know, a, whatever, you, you really want somebody local uh, that knows your situation, especially in the event of a catastrophe, they're probably going through it too. So I, I sit down, let's say you call, Cleve, this is Carl, I've had this loss, we talk about it, and I counsel you. And to some degree, I hold your hand. If it's a serious claim, maybe it's a serious auto accident, maybe it's, again, a serious property claim, could be your business. That's your livelihood, and that's the livelihood of your employees too. So we want to make sure we're doing the best job we can for you. So your agent's not just an advisor, a trusted advisor, as you said, but they're your advocate, right? They're in a, they're somebody else that's going to be there to try and help you navigate through the process of, as we're talking about right now, claims. Well, and exactly, Carl, m most people will not have a claim. But when they do, it, it's life-altering, even if it's something small. They've never had it before. We're back to insurance is a promise. You're getting, well, my day, you got a big binder full of nice paper. Now it's a PDF. Um, so when it works, it works well. And you want to make sure that you are informing them and advising them kind of how it's going to progress. So here's what's going to happen. The adjuster, Carl, he's going to call you within whatever. And then they're going to ask you for this. And you're leading them down the path to get them back to where they were before the loss. You're right. And nobody's happy, right? No. This, is not a, this is not a period of time, whether it's their first claim or their, their third or fourth claim. Nobody's happy when there's a loss. So it's important that we do, like you're saying, hold their hand if, if need be through that process. And, and be sure that we help them navigate the, the bureaucracy really that does exist, you know, for going through that process. Backing up for that, tell me what you see as being the major difference, because we get asked this all the time. Do I want an agent? Do I want a broker? Do I need to buy? Can I, should I buy it online? Back in the day, it was, should I buy it through the mail, right? Uh, and, and everyone has all of these options now. And some of the carriers for, you know, will actually offer coverage direct to the consumer and they'll offer it to the to an in, through an independent broker channel. Can you tell me what would be the differentiation between purchasing direct from a carrier or that same carrier writing a policy with for you through a broker? Well, that's a good question, Carl. So I look at your your life is broken into segments. So for me, when I got out of college, I was renting a, you know a, a house or an apartment, you had one car, it probably wasn't a new car, My, mine wasn't. Uh, and your life was fairly simple. You didn't have a lot of assets back in that day. I had a stereo and I had things called record albums. Um, so at that point, your insurance needs or requirements are probably not that great. You could buy it online, you could get it uh, over the phone, whatever, through a mobile app, and you're going to be fine. But as your life progresses and you acquire things, what I tell people is if you woke up tomorrow morning and whatever we're talking about, whether it's your house, your car, jewelry, uh, valuable musical instruments, classic cars, boats, if it disappeared, if you woke up, looked out in your driveway, would it be a financial hardship? Well, if it's a 1985 Chevy Malibu, it's probably not a hardship. But if it's a 2024 Corvette C8, it might be a problem. So it makes a difference. You're getting the same product, but you're get, you, you, as your life gets more complicated, the ability for you to keep up and do these things without guidance becomes more critical. Right. And to me, where you're probably that tipping point, 
I'm going to say is when you purchase a home. That is your biggest, most people's biggest asset. You want it uh, protected properly. In the event of a loss, you want it with a reputable carrier, and you want good coverage. I want to talk about that type about that topic specifically about what is good coverage because as as brokers you hear this all the time I want full coverage full coverage uh, and, and that speaks volumes to me because that tells me that's someone that needs a little bit of an education right because what is full coverage so those types of terms all risks full coverage I don't like to use them and if there are any agents out there I would recommend that you as a as as an association uh from from an eno standpoint remove those from either advertising or your website so to me what you want to do is this isn't again this isn't a happy meal or a combo meal what you're doing is you're sitting down and again what is important i know Carl, you know this, I know this, we've been in the business a long time, but the, the average consumer doesn't. Home policies come with a number of different options and you can p- kind of pick and choose. So what I do is go through and say, okay, is this important? And again, back to our life-changing event. Then build a policy for them. And it's, and the, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I agree. And that's something that they can't do by themselves because right. they don't, you have to know what you don't know, right? Let's talk a little bit more about what the market's like for homeowners. We'll take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll have our special guest, Clee Best, and we'll keep talking about insurance. This is Carl Sussman, and this is Insurance Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in just a few moments, the window to the Magic Podcast Show will begin. My name is Patrick. My name is Calvin. I'm Mouseketeer Gray. My name is Paul, and I will be your guide through the wonderful world of Disney sound experiences. This show is a weekly trip into the world of the Disney theme parks and resorts. And this is the place where you get to use your ears to surround yourself with the magic. For your safety, please remain seated while listening to the WindowToTheMagic.com podcast. Maybe there's a name for this. Something like Disnotic Obsession. Please visit windowtothemagic.com for more information, or you can find us on Apple Podcasts and in the iHeartMedia app. Hello, hello, Carl Sussman. This is Insurance Hour. Thank you so much for being here. We are here with our special guest, Cleve Best. Remember, phone lines are open right now at 559 559- 656-0317. Send your questions in also to questions at insurancehour.com. Join the texting group at 5674-CARL. Don't forget Carl with a K. That's 567-367-5275. Before the break, we were talking with Cleve about insurance matters and specifically customizing a homeowner's policy. Cleve, tell me when when somebody reaches that point where they need to buy a home, and they need to purchase home insurance, and you have to go through what options are available. How do you do that, and how difficult is it today in the insurance industry to get homeowners insurance in general? Good question, Carl. Uh, As you know, being in California, a lot of trouble either renewing or getting coverage, whatever. Carl, and everybody in California, we feel your pain too. So, you're probably thinking, wow, those guys live in the desert. They don't have to worry about fire. We have huge fires out here. Look them up. The, it, it, it's unbelievable that we do. So what is happening is we're down here in the valley. It's 115. Where do we want to go? We want a vacation in Flagstaff or the White Mountains. Where do you want to be? You don't want it to look like your home in the city. You want to be where? Out in the woods. And Everybody is having trouble getting coverage at an affordable rate out in those areas. Even here in town, as you get in outer line areas, 
still problems. So it, it, again, we feel your pain and other states do too. It's not a California problem. And when, when you're talking about feeling the pain, are you talking about availability, price, a little bit of both? And, and what is that looking like for you over there? I would, Carl, it's both. You, uh, one, and this is a little bit off the subject, but I've occasionally, so we are advisors for people that call the Department of Insurance and they'll refer the people to us. What happens, what I've seen is people either renewing their coverage or purchasing a home and they haven't done their due diligence. To me, when you're looking at a home, the first thing you should do is contact your agent or your company and see if you can get insurance. Number one, whether you'll, you don't go down the path, get to the end and then call Carl and say, guess what? I'm closing tomorrow. I need insurance and I'm in Santa Barbara. I'm up in the hills and it's a $13 million home. Probably not. Get, well, Carl can do it. Are you hiding in my office? That I think that happened this morning. That's it. <laughs> that's it. So again, make sure that you can get insurance. Look at the claims history. Some I had somebody that called and they had water claims combined with a tough area. So again, just if, if there's nothing else you take away besides how great looking I am and how great looking and uh, informative Carl's podcasts are, is if you're looking at a house, make sure you can get insurance before you go any farther. It's interesting because it's seen, it, it, it's so no, it's so against the grain for most people, right? And and we see we do see it every day where people have entered escrow and then they start looking and they start finding things out. Uh, again, not the marketplace we're in right now. As far as costs go, are you seeing prices for insurance, whether it be auto insurance or home insurance, any type of personal insurance, what type of co- prices are you seeing? Are you seeing prices staying fairly, you know, even? Do you see prices going up, down? What What's the trend like? So I tell people your your insurance, like your age, is going to keep going up. There's no magic eight ball or potion that's going to help you. Costs are going up. So whether so, somebody the the question you probably get a lot is my car is a year older. Well, that'd be great if we could go back to 2012 and get 2012 parts or 2010 or 15. No, we have to buy the parts today and they're more expensive. Everything is more expensive. So when you feel the pain when you shop personally, the insurance company is doing the same thing when they rebuild your car, your house, whatever, is they're going into the marketplace and feeling the same pain And so, again, it's a combination of the fire problems or whatever and rising costs. Everything goes up. I always ask people, what is not more expensive today than it was five years ago, right? And insurance carriers, of course, are buying all of those same things that are are more expensive as well. So when you're talking to people and you're trying to explain to them why costs have gone up on their insurance premium, what types of things can you talk about that you advise them on that they can do to try and lower those premiums? I can't say back down because that implies they can get where they were. We know that can't happen. But what types of things do you advise people to do to save some money on their premium? Probably the biggest, let's let's take auto insurance first. The one thing, and I know I get pushback on that, I used to get from my clients, is telematics, a driving app. Here's where you control the rate. You heard me right. You control what you pay. So the better driver you are, the less you will pay. That's a fact. And if you've got a family Make it a competition. You'll be able to see daily how well you're doing. Think about your son, your daughter, your spouse, significant other. Make it a competition, and guess what? The competition is going to result in cheaper rates. And if you think, well, I don't want Big Brother, knowing where I am, that ship sailed a long time ago, called Mark Zuckerberg. He knows exactly that you where you were or where you are. 
on homes. I liken this to what realtors have been telling you for years, location, location, location. So a little bit, if you're buying a house, check location. But what did they tell you to do? You know, Carl, could you trim the bushes? Could you put a coat of paint? Here's what's, here's what's happening in the insurance industry. Think of when you were young and you played musical chairs. And you got down and there were 10 chairs and there were 15 of you. That's what's going on in the insurance marketplace. There's 10 policies available. There's 15 people. You want to make your risk, your house, your car, whatever, your business, the best one. Maybe it is a coat of paint. Maybe, maybe it's a new roof. I've told people if you've had water claims, you need a water detection system. It's not an if. It's a yes, you have to. It's, it's terrific advice. And I want to talk more about other money-saving tips because I get asked that as much as you do. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk to Cleve about some more ways to save money on our insurance. Do you need homeowner's insurance? Has your previous insurance company left the state, non-renewed your policy, or maybe they just raised your premium to an amount that you simply can't afford? Whatever the situation, we can help. Just dial pound 250 on your cell phone and say keyword insurance quote, and we will connect you with an agent who can assist you right away. Or if you prefer, you can visit us online at insurancehour.com forward slash quotes. Whether you're looking for homeowner's insurance or auto insurance, we'll send the best options straight to you. So what are you waiting for? Simply dial pound 250 and say keyword insurance quote. And we will connect you with a live agent to help provide competitive quotes for your homeowner's insurance or auto insurance. Don't get caught unprepared. Insure what matters with an insurance company you can trust and with a premium that you can afford. Don't put off until tomorrow what you should have done yesterday. Simply dial pound 250 on your cell phone and say keyword insurance quote. Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here. Phone lines are still open. 559-656-0317. Send your questions in to questions at insurancehour.com. If you want to shoot us a text, go for it. 567-4-CARL. That's 567-367-5275. If you have missed any of this show, jump online and go find a copy of it and watch it from the beginning. This has been an incredible show. We've had a ton of valuable information with our special guest today, Klebe Best. Just go online, search for Insurance Hour. You'll find us as a podcast. You'll find us on iHeartMedia, Amazon Alexa. It's on YouTube. It's everywhere. Just find it and look for this show. Find the one that talks about Klebe Best and make sure you hear the whole thing because there's a lot of good information. To that point, let's get some more of it. We're talking about different ways to save money on, I think we left off with homeowner's insurance, and you were talking about how people need to make their risks look more attractive. Explain how that works. Well, exactly, Carl. Insurance companies are going to inspect your risk. Now, whether it's a drone, I know there's some pushback on that, whether that's clutter or whether that's just the way you live. So, again, (laughs) you, you need to make your home look, pretend you're selling your home. Make sure it's neat and clean. It can be a 1,000-square-foot home. It can be a 10,000-square-foot home. There's no difference in cleanliness. And again, if you've had any type of loss, so you have a theft, install an alarm system. You'll get a discount. So what insurance companies want you to do today is be a partner. And what they want you to do is maintain your home, maintain your car. And if something happens, you're going to take steps to make sure it doesn't happen again. That's the important thing. And and you had brought up an interesting analogy. I want to go back to it because I really liked it about musical chairs and how there might be 10 seats and there are 15 people that need to sit down. How does that actually translate into the insurance world? Whereas we're used to being able to call an agent or broker or check around and we'd get lots of options. There's tons of chairs, right? It would be the opposite. There'd be 15 chairs and 10 people, right? No problem. What are you, what has changed? How do you best explain to consumers? How has that happened that now there's more clients looking for coverage than coverage that's currently available in the marketplace? Well, I think, 
for years, it, to your point earlier, it's been commoditized. You've seen the ads on TV, and we, we don't need to name the companies, but they've made it seem very easy. And for agents, it, it has been easy. You could sell on price. You could get multiple quotes for people. Even um, I remember I was working with one of our clients that was looking to purchase a home in Malibu, and it was you know, one, one road in, uh, that type of thing. The quote was, it wasn't a very, it wasn't $5 million, but that quote five, six years ago was still 20 or $30,000. So again, it's, it's tough. Um, you, you, you want to make your house again, the best it can be. You just, you, you, and small claims, we're back on the claims thing, just real quick, Carl, is they don't, you, your insurance policy isn't a maintenance policy. It's not going to help every five tiles break off, shingles, whatever, get them fixed. Small claims are the just the bane. They are, they are going to count against you. And here, glass claims, you've probably seen it there. Class claims count against you. My mantra is every claim counts against you regardless of size. If anybody's told you any different, they're wrong. It's interesting about that as well, back to what we were saying initially, was everyone has their own threshold, right? And what I hear from people, even when they don't have, when it's below their threshold, right, they could they could incur the loss and it wouldn't, it wouldn't kill them. Right. But they'll come and they'll say, but I've been paying this premium all this time. Why? What's wrong with me trying to get some of that money back for this claim? How do you address the mentality of uh, invest insurance policy as an investment with a return versus as an insurance policy that's there for a loss? In, in the past, you could get by with smaller claims. Now we're back to the musical chairs. So the, the claims are very, very important. So what I tell people is, Carl, when you call me with a loss, I say, Carl, your deductible is $1,000. By the terms of this policy, you can turn in a claim <clears throat> for $1,001. You are going to pay the first thousand. The company is going to pay a <clears> dollar. <throat> Do you really want a dollar claim on your record. So again, I tell people the legal aspects. You can turn in a $5 claim, $100 claim, 200 But again, what do we? Insurance agents are trusted advisors. You need to make that bond with your client, your insured, that you are telling them things that are going to make their life easier and you're doing it for them. You're not doing it for you. It has nothing monetarily for you. You're just making sure that you're watching out for them. You know, in your role uh, at IIABAZ, you work with agents and you represent brokers. What makes a good broker, right? You, you're, you're, do you go on Yelp? Do you knock on your neighbor's door? Do you just randomly pick the first one that shows up in Google. How do you find a good trusted advisor? What are you looking for? I would pick somebody that is somewhat of a specialist in what you're looking for. So let's touch on personal lines. Let's touch on high net worth. Let's touch on business. Let's touch on professionals like a doctor. Like an insurance agent, we all have what we all call errors and emissions or what you may know um, as professional liability. So you wouldn't want, just like going to a doctor, if you've got a toothache, you're not going to go to a brain surgeon. You're going to go to a dentist. So same within this industry called insurance, just like doctors, they're specialists. So if you have a specific type of risk that you want to ensure you want to go to a specialist i want to talk about the specialty aspect we're gonna take another quick break but i want to hit on this because 
a lot of times you'll see ads and people will just say, oh, I do everything. I do everything. And I think it's, it, it makes some sense to discuss what the implications of that are and how you can get different policies and different advice depending on the specialty of that broker. Let's take a quick break. When we come back. We will be with Klebe Best and we'll go over some more. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in just a few moments, the window to the Magic Podcast Show will begin. My name is Patrick. My name is Calvin. I'm Mouseketeer Gray. My name is Paul, and I will be your guide through the wonderful world of Disney sound experiences. This show is a weekly trip into the world of the Disney theme parks and resorts. And this is the place where you get to use your ears to surround yourself with the magic. For your safety, please remain seated while listening to the Window to the Magic.com podcast. Maybe there's a name for this. Something like Disnotic Obsession. Please visit windowtothemagic.com for more information, or you can find us on Apple Podcasts and in the iHeartMedia app. Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here. Remember, phone lines are still open, 559-656-0317. You can also text that number or shoot us an email to questions at insurancehour.com. We want to hear from you. We want to answer the questions that you have. It's a tough insurance market. We want to be here to help you. We have our special guest, Cleve Best, with us today. If you've missed any of this show, jump online, search for Insurance Hour, find the way you want to listen to it or watch it on YouTube or as a podcast, a lot of actionable information here that will be helpful for you no matter where you are. Cleve, before the break, we were talking about brokers, right? And specializing in how some brokers might be better at one thing and some at another. Can you give us a little more detail about how that works? And as importantly, how do you decide what type of a broker you want to get? So great question. We were talking during the break of the people that say we do it all, all types of insurance, A to Z. So again, let's be- get back on specialists. If you want uh, an addition built on your house, you know you you want somebody that can do that. Or if you have problems with your sink, do you want a carpenter? No, you want a plumber. Same thing in the medical field. You want a specialist. A, a good place to start out is if you're a member of a trade association or a professional association, those people ask, ask, ask your colleagues, ask your friends. If you're in a particular neighborhood to whether it's California or Arizona, who are they using in your neighborhood if you're having trouble? Uh, we as a trade association, we also have um, a link in our website. You can go to, now this is for Arizona only. I'm sure if California and the other states do too. It's www.trustedchoice, all one word, dot com slash agent, singular, slash AZ. Uh, there it will list, there's a map of Arizona. There's cities listed. And then you can pick one close by where you work, where you live. Uh, it gives a little blurb. You can go to their website, check them out. And uh, that's that's another avenue. So going to the trade associations is a good way. Asking neighbors is a good way. And how does the average consumer know when they're looking at this list of names, who is going to be their their special person? When they're calling or they're contacting, what are some basic, what are your top three things that they should look out for when they're calling or when they're contacting a new broker to, to, to look out for or to be aware of? Just three. Give us your top three. I would say interested. So when you're calling, it, you can tell if they're doodling, if they're petting their dog, if they're looking at email, they're interested. They genuinely care. You, you'll be able to tell if they're interested, genuinely care, and if you have a problem, they've listened and can kind of say, oh, so Carl, you're having a problem with this. Then you know you've been listening. Also, asking the right questions. 
So some people will use a template. Um, I sort of did just broad brush strokes. You know, do you have any jewelry? Do you have any guns? Do you have any ATVs, kids in college, whatever, those types of things. But again, listen for the questions. If they're just reading off a script, hi, do you have a home? How, you, you can tell, like when you're having a conversation with somebody, if they're interested, same over the phone, whether you're having a Zoom meeting, whatever, you'll know. And again, here's one thing is you'll be able to tell. You really will. Kind of trust, trust your heart. How important is it to find out how you're going to be communicating with your broker. I know some of them like, some people love to deal just with email or texting. They don't want phone calls. They don't want to be on Zoom. Uh, I remember years ago before the pandemic, I was always trying to do video calls with, with clients because I liked the FaceTime, right? I wanted to be able to have more of a connection and people did not want anything to do with it. It was just talk to me on the phone. What's this computer stuff and video? I don't want any of this, right? Wow, have things changed? <laughs> but how important is it for you to try and find someone that likes to communicate in the same way that you do? So that that is one of the questions. So when I'm interviewing Carl, we're getting to the end and I'm saying, Carl, how do you want me to communicate? And every communication may be different. You may say, you know, Cleve, text me for these types of things. But if it's this, I'd like an email or I'd like a phone call, whatever. There again, one size, we're back to this one size doesn't fit all. Um, I will tell you that on larger accounts, I end up talking personal lines, I want to go out and meet you. I want to see your house. Again, we're back to this is your most important asset. People should be proud of their house. You go through. Plus, you. I was at a house, and they had a huge Remington statue. And if you look them up, they're <laughs> very expensive. And they didn't have it covered on their current policy. So you're going to uncover things, and guess what? You, you, you're going to make their life easier. And back on the point, trusted advisor. Oh, I didn't, you know, the other company, they, nobody came out and they really, again, you, I'm not saying you can go out on every home or every auto policy, right? But for the ones that you need to, uh, it, it, you will strengthen that bond. And from the consumer standpoint, this is something you'd want to be asking as well. If you're calling agents and you're trying to decide what broker is good, what broker is bad, you can ask them, do you, will you come out and see my home? Is that something that you do? And that might be something that tips the scale for you one way or the other as well. Correct. And on high-end homes, the high-end companies will usually come out and do a loss control survey, and they will look at it and give you tips on ways to reduce your insurance and to make your home safer. Because one thing you do not want to do in any size home, any business, is have a loss. Because it puts, it, it just, it, it puts a big speed bump in your life. Loss is bad. I always try and remind people about this, that this is not a good thing. This is not a, oh good, now I can get money back from my insurance company. No, loss is bad. It means something has happened to you that's bad. It means that the carrier is going to have to spend money, which is going to be reflected in your premium. That's bad. Uh, these are things, like you said, uh, these are things to avoid, not, not to look forward to, and certainly not to look to gain when they happen. Listen, we have one more quick break. We're going to come back and we're going to tie it all up in a bow with our special guest, Cleve Best. Thank you so much for being here. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll put it all together for you. This is Insurance Hour and I am your host, Carl Sussman. We will be back in a flash. Are you feeling lost in the search for the right insurance? Making call after call, only to find no one willing to go that extra mile for you? At Sussman Insurance Agency, we understand that frustration, and we're here to change your experience. Where others see obstacles, we see opportunities. While many might shy away from jumping through hoops, at Sussman Insurance Agency, we are prepared to leap. Looking under every rock, exploring every avenue, that's not just what we do, it's who we are. Our dedicated team doesn't just offer policies, we provide solutions. 
solutions born from persistence, expertise, and a genuine commitment to finding you the best coverage possible. We don't just meet expectations, we surpass them. If you're tired of hearing no or it's not possible, it's time to turn to a team that believes in yes and let's make it happen. Don't settle for less. Reach out to Sussman Insurance Agency at 877-411-5200. Visit us online at sussmaninsurance.com or email sales at sussmaninsurance.com. Let's uncover the insurance solutions you deserve. Sussman Insurance Agency, going the extra mile every time. Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here today. Phone lines are open yet at 559-656-0317. You can call or text. Join our texting group at 5674-CARL. It's 567-367-5275. Of course, email as well. Questions at insurancehour.com. We really want to hear from you. If you have the question, the chances are there are lots of other people that have that question as well. Also, if you call and you get the voicemail, feel free to tell us, hey, play my recording on the air. I want to hear myself. Or please don't just answer my question. We want to make you comfortable. We're in this last segment with our special guest, Clee Best. And if you've missed any of the show, jump online, search for Insurance Hour, find a copy of this show and listen to the whole thing. There is a ton of information in here and you do not want to miss any of it. In these last couple of minutes we have together, Clee, why don't we talk a little bit about what consumers should know when they're communicating with their broker? How how honest should they be or should they be trying to present their best side, if you will? The answer is you want to be totally transparent and totally honest. Carl, I had a situation. I had a client who had moved from California, surprisingly, to Arizona. This was some years ago. And he was sitting across from me, and we were going through an auto policy, just a standard auto policy, nothing fancy. We're going through, and I asked him if he'd had any claims, and he said, no, I had. I've got a clean driving record. I said, that's great. And I got on the computer. I'm getting ready to issue it and hit the button for his claims history. And it came back with a huge claim. So I turned the screen around and I said, Carl, looks like you've had a huge claim. He said, oh, my gosh, I just gotten divorced. And I was and this is true. I was on the 405 and it was raining and I had bald tires because that and I won't use the word, took all my money, and I caused this huge accident, and I think it was on TV. And I said, but I asked you, did you have any claims? He said, well, I just kind of forgot. So That massive, life-changing event, he just forgot. Yes. Nowadays, with data, we'll find out. Again, maybe back to what a little bit earlier in the segment, if you missed it, <clears throat> we're talking about if you're buying a home. Again, check for prior losses. Just because you are buying the home, it doesn't negate losses going, oh, they're not my losses. Well, we're insuring the house, not you. So again, make sure you get a loss report. So back on honesty, be honest. We're going to find out. It also, you know, agents and brokers are people, right? And if you start out and they're they're representing you, they're representing themselves in a certain way, and then completely different information comes back, you are going to look at the rest of the information with a bit of a jaundice eye as well, because we're human, right? That's what we're going to do. And to your point, there's really no hiding any of this anymore, right? And what I always tell people, and you can tell me what you think of this, I tell them you never want to give an insurance carrier a great excuse to deny a claim. And lying on your application is a beautiful way to do that. Yes. So, again, also, and think of, I'm going to keep using this word because I want it to sink in, trusted advisor, is when you're talking and maybe you've, you're telling your agent about a claim or a situation, they may have a solution. They should be, again, your partner in the insurance journey. They want to make sure that you have the best insurance, your home, your auto, everything is safe, and that you never, hopefully, have a claim. No claim is better than a covered claim, is what I like to tell people, yes. right? And, and I like how you're, you're leaning a lot on the prevention because that's not something that tends to be in people's general thought model. It's not, 
what can I do to prevent loss? It's, I want to be sure I'm covered if I have one. And can you tell us what's the, I mean, what's the fundamental psychological difference between those two? Well, again, back to your point, if somebody's dishonest with you at the beginning, they're probably going to be dishonest again. And that's going to lead to maybe more claims, larger claims, whatever. It's just a lack of concern. And so to me, you want people that want to make their home, and again, whether it's a thousand or ten thousand or whatever square feet, safe. You want your occupants, you want your family safe, you want your guests, your friends safe. Nobody wants somebody to be injured. And I had a situation, somebody was uh, asking me, uh, they live in Florida, and they were talking about getting insurance. And we reviewed some things. Again, I disclaimer, I'm not their agent. I'm just giving free advice. And I said, you know, Carl, you're, you're going to have to put a new roof on your house. You're going to have to do one that's up to Florida code. It's going to cost a lot of money. And the person did it about a month later, sent me a little email and said, Klebe, yes, I bit the bullet. I, I did have to take out a loan. But guess what? I have insurance and my neighbors don't. So there's a lot of, as an agent, you're going to have a lot of tough love. You're going to have to look at your client and say, Carl, sorry, you're going to have to put a new roof on. You're going to have to get your home repiped. I had somebody call that had had five water claims. I said, you have to repipe your home before you can even go anywhere else. But don't be afraid to counsel your clients on what they need to do. That again, your this your trusted advisor. They they should listen to you, or at least try to rectify the problem. You know, it's it's never it's never lost on me that we do this for a living, and we do a lot of it on autopilot. But when consumers are calling around and they're dealing with these processes, this is it's, like you said earlier, it's new. It might be the first time if it's a claim. It's probably not the first time if it's a bill. But it's 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 not something that they deal with time you know time and time again, and so I think that it's important once again to keep in mind that you want to have a broker that's going to have the patience and the interest, as you said earlier, the genuine interest in working with you, because at the end of the day, that's what's going to get you the best results, whether it be for the right product and the right price, and if there's a claim, Klebe. It has been such a pleasure to have you here. I hope we can have you back again to talk about this some more. We could go on and on and on and on. Carl, it's been a pleasure. I'm going to leave your listeners with one little mantra. Good insurance isn't cheap. Cheap insurance isn't good. Just remember that when you're shopping for insurance. More honest words could have never been spoken. I love that. I am stealing it right now, just so you know. But well, I will it, credit it you for it. So you do have to pay. A it is. Pay. It is brilliant. I love it. This is Insurance Hour that you've been learning from. I am Carl Sussman with special guest Klebe Best. Thank you so much for being here, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Take thank care, you, Carl. I do want to thank all of you for taking the time to listen today. I know insurance is not necessarily the most sexy concept. It's not the most exciting thing in the world. It is important that you understand what it is you're getting, what you should be looking for, red flags, you name it. You just need to know more than you used to. Things are more complicated than they used to be. If you have any questions, please reach out to me directly. You can email your questions to questions at insurancehour.com or call and leave a voicemail at 559 559- 656-0317. Educating and entertaining Californians one insurance policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. The show is dedicated to Shamrock Papa.